Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and today we're going to discuss some of the recent discoveries about our sun, and actually maybe discoveries that are somewhat unnerving, because in one of the recent studies, based on the observation of very similar stars in our galaxy, researchers discovered that stars similar to our sun actually tend to produce extremely powerful emissions, or basically these super flares, much more frequently than we ever thought possible, and that by itself could be a huge problem. And so let's discuss this in a little bit more detail, but I guess let's start with just a little bit of history. And specifically, this guy, Richard Christopher Carrington, a relatively rich brewery owner who was also very fascinated with astronomy. And as the story goes, in 1859, while sketching sunspots observed on the sun, he was actually shocked to discover that one of these sunspots, as he was observing it, suddenly became extremely bright. And a few days later, an extremely powerful magnetic storm hit planet Earth. And during this time, as we know today, it seems to have affected a lot of different early systems, with the best example being the telegraph systems. In some cases, telegraph machines were actually running without batteries, in other cases, they burst into flames. And well, today we know this as the Carrington event, basically the most powerful geomagnetic storm in modern history. But somewhat similar events, although maybe not as powerful, did actually happen quite a few times, including in 2024. You can learn about this in one of the previous videos in the description, but the May 2024 event was actually also relatively powerful. Luckily for us though, there were no major disruptions, just a lot and a lot of aurora. And so following the May 2024 storm, the overall consensus was that maybe these Carrington events would not be as damaging as we actually thought, and maybe a lot of modern technology is basically ready for them. But there is a small but. In the last decade, researchers discovered at least nine geomagnetic storms that were at least a hundred times more powerful than the Carrington event. Storms resulting from some kind of a super flare from the sun, powerful enough to do serious damage to modern technology, but rare enough that we actually don't really know when the next one is going to happen. And we've talked about a few of these events in some of the previous videos in the description, with one of the more recent ones discussed right here, and all of them essentially discovered in a very similar way, by basically identifying extreme spikes in concentrations of radioactive carbon by using ancient tree rings, but by then also confirming these spikes in various ice cores as well. Here though, by using different isotopes such as beryllium and chlorine. And today we refer to these as Miyake events, named after the researcher that discovered them a few years back. It's actually this wonderful lady, Fusa Miyaki, a physicist from Nagoya University in Japan, who discovered this while doing her doctoral research approximately a decade ago. And so today, by using various fossils and by using ice cores, researchers confirmed a few of these events in the last 15,000 years. But based on the events discovered so far, it's always been believed that these happen maybe once every thousand years. So here we're talking about some kind of a powerful event that suddenly results in a dramatic increase of radiation powerful enough to affect the isotopes in the atmosphere. And just as a side note, Carrington event was not powerful enough to do any of this. So Carrington event or any of the previous geomagnetic storms in the last 200 years are not visible in the ice cores or in the tree rings. And so if such an event were to occur today, it would most likely result in a lot of damage to various electronic systems. It would also affect power grids, it would affect satellites and aviation, and possibly the banking system and of course the internet. But that's where we basically reach our ignorance. What causes Miyake events, or how to predict them, is basically completely unknown. We just know that a few of them happened in the last 15,000 years, with the most recent one being in 775 AD. And the signs of this event are actually visible in some of the Viking tools left in Canada, when the Viking explorers basically settled in Canada, but then mysteriously disappeared a few decades later. But there's maybe one way we can try to understand these events and possibly predict them, which is kind of what the scientists tried in this new paper. And that way involves other stars, and specifically other G-type stars extremely similar to our sun, and the observations going back a few decades. And so here, maybe, by observing a lot of other stars, we can actually come up with some kind of an average in order to discover how likely these events are to happen around the Sun. And so in this recent study, Valery Vasiliev and his team used the photometric observation from the Kepler Space Observatory 
In order to find out how many of Sun-like stars would have very powerful super flares in a decade of Kepler's observations. And here, by observing 56,450 G-type stars, focusing on very powerful emissions, referred to as super flares, they actually discovered nearly 3,000 such super flares on 2,500 of these stars. Although here they made sure to focus on stars as similar to our Sun as possible, and specifically stars that were not spinning too fast. Since rotation can actually be linked to flare activity, and since rotation usually decreases over time, they basically excluded all stars whose rotation period was shorter than 20 days. For comparison, Sun's rotation is 25 days. And that's because anything with a shorter period might actually be much more magnetically active and even younger, which would technically skew the data. And since we know that stellar rotation usually decreases as the star ages, they mostly just wanted to focus on older G-type stars, stars that would not be as active on average. But because they've discovered nearly 3,000 super flares, statistically this suggests one super flare for a G-type star every 100 years. And that by itself is extremely surprising. It basically suggests that a lot of these super flares, at least around other G-type stars, seem to be very, very common. Common enough to possibly become a problem, especially if our own Sun is similar to these other G-type stars. And so unless for some reason our Sun is an exception, it basically suggests that these Miyake events could be much, much more frequent than we ever thought. And maybe they just don't always hit planet Earth. Maybe they actually do happen quite a lot, but also miss the planet if the magnetic storm goes in a different direction. But that's of course just an assumption. The real explanation is currently unknown. And because these events are at least 100 times more powerful than the Carrington event, that of course presents us with a bit of a problem. The problem being that if this happens to us now, yeah, our technology is going to be in a lot of trouble. But there is a really important side note in all of this. The observations here were of solar flares, or I guess technically super flares, which are these gigantic flares that basically make a sunspot on the sun extremely, extremely bright. And so this is essentially photons. In case of planet Earth, it takes them approximately 8 minutes to get to planet Earth, but they don't have the same effects as a geomagnetic storm. For example, they can actually disrupt some high-frequency radio communications and can even change the density of the ionosphere, affecting radio transmissions, but they don't affect technology on the planet, and on the surface, nobody is going to notice anything. However, solar flares are sometimes accompanied by geomagnetic storms. And that's essentially when you have magnetic lines on the sun suddenly snap, releasing an enormous amount of material headed somewhere. And if this highly charged material reaches planet Earth, that's when you get a geomagnetic storm. Or essentially, geomagnetic storms involve actual charged particles that travel for at least several days to reach planet Earth. And it's these particles that then cause damage on the planet. These coronal mass ejections generate currents on the surface of the planet and can easily overload anything involving electrical currents. And while well, Carrington event was basically both. It was a flare followed by a coronal mass ejection. Something similar happened in May 2024 as well. But not all flares produce CMEs, and so not all of them result in geomagnetic storms. And in this case, we're not sure if these giant flares would always have giant geomagnetic storms. And that's because we basically have never seen one from the Sun, and the ones around other stars are just way too far to analyze. And so basically it's unclear if all of these gigantic flares are going to have coronal mass ejections. Nevertheless, it is definitely something we should be concerned about, and it is something that needs to be studied. Which for us means that we're going to be talking about more of these events as new studies come out. This is actually a super fascinating topic, and we've only known about these events for the past 10 years. But unfortunately, other than these observations, we actually don't really know much else. The only thing we know for sure is that these events do happen quite a lot, and they've happened at least 9 times in the last 15,000 years, affecting planet Earth as well. But chances are that in the next few years, we might actually discover that they are much more frequent, and there might be a lot more data in a lot of this fossil evidence and in a lot of ice cores. Evidence that just has not been found yet. And so once we discover more, we'll discuss this in some of the future videos. Check out previous videos in the description, subscribe, thank you for watching, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, come back tomorrow to learn something else, support this channel on Patreon by joining channel membership or by buying the wonderful person t-shirt you can find in the description. Stay wonderful, I'll see you tomorrow, and as always, bye-bye.